Hello, my name is Richard Cohen. Welcome to episode two of our series on meditation for beginners. Perhaps you're wondering what the story is on, on this guy that I've been showing you at the beginning of each episode. That is a sloth in a meditating position. Sorry, let me stand up again. Well, it's in a, he's in a yoga, he or she is in a yoga position and he's got one leg uh, on the, one foot up uh, on the knee of his other leg and he's standing on one leg. We're not gonna get into um, yoga positions today, but um, if this idea of meditation interests you, know that there are many ways and techniques for how to position your body uh, during various meditation practices. Um, so, but this sloth right here, <laughs> maybe you see that one right there too. That is a slothicorn, um, a combination sloth and unicorn. I have decided that the sloth is my spirit animal for the pandemic. Um, the sloth has inspired how I have been behaving and living my life for the last year. <laughs> Oh, um, so with a little tongue in cheek humor uh, that I live my life with, um, I made the sloth my spirit animal to inspire me to be calm and slow and as sloth like as possible. It's not the most productive way of being, but in terms of meditation, it's not a bad um, image to have in your mind as you meditate, this idea of a slow, relaxed sloth. So for today's session, we're gonna talk about guided imagery. Guided imagery is not something that most people can do on their own. They need someone else to listen to, to guide them through the imagery. Some people can do it on your own. Um, I can, um, but I've been doing it for a long time. Um, guided imagery is um, the, it's the idea of placing yourself in a story um, and moving through that story, which can often create a meditative state or happen in a meditative state. My, um, my master's degree thesis um, was on using guided imagery with early childhood teachers uh, as part of their professional development. Uh, if you missed the first session, you may have missed me mentioning that I'm an early childhood educator. I've been working with young children and their families and the professionals who serve them for coming up on 40 years. So that's why I'm a grown man with a stuffed animal and weird clothes. And just, I don't know, it's just me being an early childhood person. But in any case, I just share all that with you to say that um, I've done a lot of studying on guided imagery and I've created two of them uh, that I've used in various uh, workshops that I present. And one of them I'm gonna take you through today. So as I say, guided imagery is usually um, an experience where someone else talks you through it. Um, so you don't sort of have full autonomy uh, or control to just sort of let your mind wa wander wherever you want it to go or to just focus on your breathing like we did last week. In guided imagery, you're keeping your attention on the person's story um, and trying to imagine yourself um, experiencing the story, which most often in guided imagery is told in second person. So first person is I am walking, third person is he or she or they are walking, and second person is you you are walking. So when we get ready to do this guided imagery exercise in just a moment, you'll be hearing me talk about you. And it's an invitation for you to picture yourself in there, I, uh, in the story. I want you to know that there's no right or wrong way to do it. Some people, when they do guided imagery, um, can visually see in their minds the story that's happening. And some people, their minds just don't work that way. They're not 
they're not visual thinkers for a variety of reasons. And so don't get hung up on if you can't see the pictures that I'm going to be telling you about. Um, just listen to my words and let the words flow around you. And that is a perfectly fine, viable way to do it. See the pictures, don't see the pictures in your mind and just listen. Uh, either way, you'll be here with me as I take you through a guided imagery exercise that's gonna last for about 10 minutes or so. This is a bit of an abbreviated version of the one that I do, uh, you know, with early childhood educators, like at conferences and things when I get hired to do it. Uh, that guided imagery is more like a half an hour long. This will be a shorter version. But this particular guided imagery that we're gonna do in a moment is about love and connecting you with your loving self. And perhaps, um, and again, no expectations, it may happen for you, it may not, but perhaps you'll come away from this particular guided imagery with some insight for yourself about um, how you give and receive love in the world and what wisdom you might want to remember in that area moving forward in your life. So that's the idea behind this particular imagery. So um, we're gonna get ourselves started now. Um, when we get started, I'll invite you to close your eyes. You don't have to, as I said last week, it's just an invitation. You'll wanna make sure to put your body in a comfortable position, sitting up, laying down, whatever works for you. There won't be anything terribly interesting happening on the screen, just me like you see right now talking to you. Uh, so you don't even have to look at the screen if you don't want. You could minimize this window if that's how you're watching it, or you know, just uh, listen to the audio, uh, however works best for you, okay? Um, uh, for this particular one, I am going to start some music or really some ambient sounds to play in the background. Hopefully you can hear that. And I'm also going to pull up my timer here. Oh. I'm doing it the wrong way, I'm so sorry. Okay, all right. So um, we're gonna get ourselves started. So take a deep breath in through your nose. Close your eyes if you'd like to, by the way. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth this time. In through your nose and out through your mouth. See if you can slow your breathing down now in through your nose and more slowly out through your mouth. One more time, even more slowly in through your nose. And even more slowly out through your mouth. As you breathe in and out, let your body relax. I'll start you off this meditation with a different introductory exercise before we even get into the guided imagery. This is another technique you could use for your own meditations. And it's called a body scan. I'm gonna talk you through noticing, the goal here is to relax your body. And how you'll do that is I'm gonna talk you through paying attention to parts of your body from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. And each time you focus on that part of your body, Try to look for in your, in your mind's eye, in your attention, um, any muscles in that area that are tense or stressed. And if you come upon one, if you feel tension somewhere, what I'd like you to do is squeeze it tighter for just a moment and then let it go and relax. And then you'll see this will go pretty fast. I'll keep you moving down through all the different parts of your body from head to toe. And as you find any uh, examples of tension or stress in your muscles. Squeeze them tighter for a moment. Let them go and relax more deeply as you continue to move your attention 
scan your attention down through your body. So here we go. First, start by paying attention to the top of your head, what we call the crown. Again, remember, I won't say this each time, but as you notice tense muscles, squeeze them ten more tensely and then let them relax. I won't say that. I'm just going to point you towards the parts of your body. So again, here we go. So you're focusing on the crown of your head, maybe even the space above your head and your scalp. Notice the muscles in your forehead and then the back of your neck, the base of your skull. Notice the muscles in your cheeks and in your jaw. Notice the muscles around your eyebrows and around the bridge of your nose. Turn your attention to the muscles, all the tiny muscles around your mouth, your tongue, your chin. Bring your attention to the front of your neck. Now turn your attention across the tops of each shoulder. A lot of us hold tension in our shoulders. Bring your attention down your arms to the sides of your arms, your biceps and triceps, your elbow joints, your forearms, the backs of your hand, the palms of your hand, each of your fingers and your thumbs. Bring your attention back to your spine. Scan down from the top of your spine to the bottom of your spine, looking for areas of tension. Do the same thing with the front of your torso, your chest, your belly. Where is their tension? Find it, squeeze it harder when you find it and tell it to and let it relax. A lot of people carry tension in their bellies, in your gut. Bring your attention to your hips, to your, to your butt, your bottom, to the tops of your thighs, the undersides of your thighs, the backsides, to your knee joints, to your shins, to your calves, to your ankles, the tops of your feet, the bottoms of your feet, and to your toes. Now I'd like you to use your imagination. Picture yourself lying in a glorious field or meadow. Feel the ground beneath you. It is firm and hard. It holds you up. You cannot fall. You are safe. You are held by the ground. You are grounded. Feel your energy going down deep into the ground and feel the energy of the earth coming back and filling your body. In your imagination, see yourself sitting up in this meadow and opening your eyes in your imagination and looking around, take it all in. What's in your meadow? Grass? flowers? Are there bugs or butterflies, birds? What sounds do you hear? Look up. Is the sky blue? Are there clouds? 
Is it getting ready to rain? In your mind's eye, see yourself standing up in this meadow and feel yourself walking across it, placing one foot, the next foot, one foot, the next foot. See yourself, feel yourself walking through this beautiful meadow as the warm sun shines down on you and it's matched by a perfectly cool breeze. The temperature is exactly the way you would want it to be. You walk and you walk. You find yourself at the edge of the meadow and standing before you is a giant forest. You turn your head to the right, trees for as far as you can see. You turn your head to the left, trees as far as you can see. You look straight ahead and you notice there's a path leading you into the forest. Go ahead and see yourself stepping onto that path and entering the forest. And walk, and walk, and walk. Noticing how now the sunlight dapples through the branches and twigs and leaves. Hear the sound of the light breeze moving all of the leaves above you. Take a breath as you walk and walk and notice how the air smells different than it did in the meadow. It's thicker here in the forest. The trees are closer together. You feel surrounded, but you feel safe. These giant trees are on all sides of you, protecting you. And you keep going down the path you can hear the twigs and leaves crunching beneath your feet. And you make your way to the end of this glorious forest. Now the forest is behind you and standing in front of you is a mountain. You decide you feel pulled toward the top of this mountain. You begin walking up the side of the mountain, walking up. You need to use different leg muscles now because you're going up a steep incline. It's getting steeper and steeper, but you're not tired. You're able to walk right up the side of this mountain. You're getting higher and higher. You look back and see the forest below you. There's still more mountain up ahead of you to climb. You can see the horizon all around, feel the warmth of the sun as you climb and climb and you make your way to a plateau at the top of the mountain. Now here you are at the top. Take a look all around at the horizons in all directions, the beauty and the expanse of the world around you. Have a seat, there's a boulder there on this plateau and you wanna just sit and take it all in. Now you notice that there is some other big rocks or maybe a cave entrance uh, on the other side of this plateau and you feel curious about it, but you stay seated on the boulder. You hear the sounds of something coming from that direction and you can tell that there's a person up there with you. And you can hear that they're walking toward you. You don't feel scared. In fact, the closer they come, the more safe and at peace you feel. Your deepest sense tells you that this person that's coming toward you has an important message for you. Now they come past the boulders and you can see them. This is the person that represents love for you. Maybe it's someone you know in real life, an ancestor, a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, your child, a dear friend, someone you've always admired, a, a figure of importance in your world. Maybe it's a religious figure. 
whoever it is for you, this is the person that represents love. And so as they walk toward you, smiling, as love emanates out of their eyes towards you, you feel at peace and loved by this person. And they approach you. And you know that something's coming that's valuable for you. And so even though you're relaxed, you're paying close attention. This person leans in and sort of motions for you to turn your ear toward them. They have something to whisper to you. So go ahead and turn your ear. See this person leaning in, perhaps cupping their hand, because they have something to whisper in your ear. Now take a moment and listen to what this person has to say to you. Take it in. You may not even understand it in this moment. Maybe you didn't hear anything. Maybe that's valuable for you. But if you heard some words, don't try to analyze them right now. Don't try to look for their meaning. Although for some of you, the meaning might be very apparent. And for some of you, you are perhaps feeling very emotional right now. It's okay. You're safe. You can feel and be however you need to be right now with whatever you just heard or, or didn't yet hear. Thank the person. Tell them whatever you'd like to tell them. Speak your power, speak your mind, express your gratitude. And now you feel that sense, that need that it's time to leave the mountaintop. This person understands it. You can say goodbye if you like, but it's not necessary. There's really no words needed between you and love. You know that you carry this person's energy and essence with you. As you make your way back down the mountain, down, 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 to the edge of the forest. You can feel the massive presence of the mountain standing behind you. It's not going anywhere. It's been there for millions of years and will stay there for millions of years after your life has passed. But you can come back and visit it and visit whomever and whatever is at the top of that mountain whenever you need to by using guided imagery. Now, as you feel the massive presence of that mountain of love behind you, step into the forest. Walk, walk through the forest. Hear the leaves and the twigs crunching beneath your feet. Smell the thicker forest air. Notice the sunlight dappling through the branches and twigs and leaves and walk and walk. Find your way back to your beautiful, glorious meadow. Now the forest stands behind you and the meadow stands before you. See yourself walking back into the center of this meadow. Find that spot from which you began. The grass there is kind of tamped down in the shape of your body from where you had been lying. See yourself lying back down in that exact spot. Feel the ground beneath you, hard, firm, strong. It's holding you up. You cannot fall. You are safe. You are grounded. Take one last deep, lovely breath of the fresh, cool, crisp and perfect meadow air. And now bring your attention from the ground in the meadow back to our real lives and whatever your body is touching right now. Instead of the ground in your imagination, bring your attention slowly to the chair you're sitting in, the couch you're laying on, the bed you're laying on. Wherever you are, 
Notice the feel, the pressure of your body against that piece of furniture. Feel the touch of your clothes against your skin. Notice the sounds in the room that you're in. Begin to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, and slowly but surely, open your eyes and bring yourself back to our time together. So I just took you through a meditation experience. What best accompanies that is reflection. So you had that experience at the top of the mountaintop, whatever it was for you, no right or wrong, even if there was no person and you heard nothing, it's not wrong, but there is something to be learned, something of value for you to be learned by whatever happened for you at the top of that mountain. So we're gonna end this session now in just a second. And when we're done, I'd like you to take a moment before you go back into the busyness of your life to reflect on what happened at the top of that mountain for you and what meaning is there for you that you can take from that. Take a moment to reflect on that in just a moment. And if through that reflection, there's still nothing there for you, that's fine. You've done nothing wrong. But my invitation to you is tonight, when your universe is just you and your pillow, and you feel safe and snuggled in, remember that experience and see if in that new, safe, warm, comfortable bed context, um, that perhaps some meaning will present itself to you from the mountaintop. I hope that you found this session valuable, my friends, and I'll see you next time.